out of here this afternoon. Mr. Lewis, I want you to know I'm honored to get to share this special time with you and Debbie and Eddie and the family, and the friends who've gathered here. I'm so thankful that my life was blessed, like every one of our lives were blessed by Mr. Jack. That smile that he had, the laugh, never forget that laughter. I had a distinct laugh. And I think about the, the fact that he enjoyed every moment of life. And that today, as we remember his life, that we're encouraged by the way that he loved every one of us, by the smile that he had, by the way that he loved us and served us and encouraged us. I think about the fact that today, we may have been caught off guard a few days ago when the Lord took him home, but as Debbie and I were talking earlier, he, he was ready. He fought a, a brave fight for a long time. And he had victories when it would seem like victory was impossible, but somehow he would pull through and find that strength. And yet we know that when he came home, he knew that the battle was coming to a close, Eddie, but he was ready. And he didn't want to be a burden to you. And even today, he doesn't want this time together to be a burden. He wants it to be a blessing. As you remember him, as you remember his love, as you remember his smile, his laughter, and that, that our lives would be challenged by his life. I made a comment as we were waiting to come in a few moments ago. I know he loved family and looking at those pictures there in the room, and whether it was ball games or around the table or games together, all these grandchildren, five grandchildren and eight great grandchildren, a lot of young men here. And uh, he would want you to be godly young men and to love one another and to love your family and to stand firm on the word of God. Think about what the scripture says in Ecclesiastes 3 where the, the Word of God says this, There's a time and a season for everything under the sun. A time to laugh and a time to cry. A time to hope and a time to give up. A time for joy and a time for pain. A time to be born and a time to die. You know, we're reminded that the Word of God tells us that God knows our days. They're, they're ordered and numbered by Him. And there's not one day that's too long or one day that's too short. So the 87 years that God blessed Mr. Jack with, God had a purpose in every one of those. And I'm also reminded today that we have sorrow. The scripture speaks of the reality that even as those who trust Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, Mr. Lewis, we have sorrow. We have grief, and it's not because we've lost, Debbie, L-O-S-T. We've not lost, Mr. Jack. Because when something's lost, that means we don't know where it is. It's misplaced. It's, it's, it's not what we thought it would be. He's not lost because we know the scripture says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. But yet there is a great loss, L-O-S-S. Because no one can take his place. No one can bring to our life what he brought to our life. And yet at the same time, there is a victory. There's a victory that's difficult for us to grab a hold to, but a victory that is Mr. Jack's today, that is an absolute victory, that the certainty of his faith is more real than ever. The Apostle Paul said it this way in 1 Corinthians 15. He said, where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So as we remember and we celebrate Mr. Jack's life, know that this is not a defeat. This is a victory. This is not that he's lost, L-O-S-T, but rather it's our loss, and yet his ultimate gain. And so, Father, we come to you. We thank you this afternoon that we can gather together as family, as friends, and we can remember rightly so Jack Loudermilk as a husband, as a father, as a grandfather, as a great-grandfather, as a brother, as a friend. Lord, we thank you for the way his life blessed our life. And Lord, I pray as we remember that we would each have a, a special moment, a memory that we could grab onto and hold to as a treasure that not only would be an anchor to the past and, and help us to remember him, but would be an encouragement to the future. They would help us to be challenged to live a life that honors you, that honors our family. So that when our last breath is taken, when, when our family gathers in a moment like this, that they'll have the same confidence that Mr. Lewis and Eddie and Debbie have to know that, Lord, that we know you as our Savior, Lord. To know that even though this life has ended, it's not the end of life, for we have eternal life. Lord, we thank you for your great love. We thank you for your word that's so clear. We thank you for the purpose that you have in every one of our lives. And we pray, Lord, that you would give us your peace that passes understanding. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
that our tears matter to him, our sorrow matter to him, that God's compassion, that God's concern, that God's mercies, they never fail. The psalmist said this in Psalm 56, verse 8. He wrote this. He said, you have stored my tears in your bottle, and you have counted each one of them. Now think about that. The God who created the universe, who spoke the world into being, the great, awesome God, the one who there is no other God but him, that he pays attention even to the little tears that find their way down our faces. And he doesn't just notice them, but literally the psalmist said, you count them, you store them, you, you hold on to them. And I couldn't help but think, why, why did the psalmist give us this incredible picture of the great compassion and concern that God has? Well, it lets us know that our sorrow and our grief matter to God. That it's not just the victories that matter to the Lord, but it's our brokenness that matters to the Lord. It's not just when things are smooth, but it's our struggles even that matter to the Lord. There's no doubt, Mr. Lewis, that it's difficult to say see you later to a husband of 65 years. You finally had him trained, didn't you? <laughs> finally had him trained. 65 years. I think, what a testimony. And probably like so many marriages and that make it those decade after decade after decade, that there are some who probably thought, well, we'll see if they make it five years, and we'll see if they make it 10 years, and we'll see if they make it 20 years. And, we'll see. and yet the Lord gave you the grace to love each other. To find strength and comfort in one another. Knowing that neither of you were perfect all along the way. But that God was good. And that your commitment to the Lord and to one another held you strong. And, and I think about what the, the writer of Proverbs. The wisest man who ever lived said in Proverbs 18, 22. He said, he who finds a wife finds what is good and receives favor from the Lord. And anyone who spent a moment with Mr. Jack would know that God, that he knew that you were God's gift to him, Mr. Morris. That he honored you and loved you. It was a beautiful, beautiful relationship, and, and that makes the reality of this difficult thing of saying, see you later, so hard. And yet I want to remind us, friends and family, that the Word of God gives us a beautiful picture, not only of God's compassion and concern, but an example, even in the life of Jesus, that even though we have faith, there is still sorrow. That even though we are certain and confident, there are still tears at times. As a matter of fact, the shortest verse in Scripture, John eleven thirty five, 35, just two words, says this, Jesus wept. Jesus wept. And in the context, what's going on is that he had gotten word that his friend Lazarus had died. Now, if you're familiar with scripture, you go, well, wait a minute. Isn't that the guy Jesus called out of the grave? It, it is. But yet Jesus in his humanity, the word of God lets us know that he wept when he heard the news that his friend had died. Even though he would go to Lazarus' tomb and call Lazarus forth, there was still the sorrow. There were still the tears. And so as followers of Jesus, the truth is we have grief, but our grief is not greater than our hope. We have tears, but our tears don't drown out the power of the gospel in our lives. But rather we find strength and hope and mercy there. The truth is our lives today and in the coming days as we miss Mr. Jack, as we want to pick up the phone Eddie and call him or we want to come by and see him. And we want to hear his laughter and see that big smile and those bright eyes. That there'll be those times when we feel overwhelmed with sorrow and overwhelmed with grief. And yet at the same time, we know that Mr. Jack has overcome all of that pain, all of that suffering. For Revelation 21, 4 says that God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. And there will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. For the old order of things has passed away. So even though we may find tears in our hearts and lives, Mr. Jack is in that wonderful place where tears have given way to glory. Today is a celebration of life. Not only a celebration of a life well lived here, but it's a celebration of eternal life. 2 Corinthians 5 verses 8 and 9 say, We are confident, yes, we're well pleased rather, to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Therefore, we make it our aim, whether present or absent, to be pleasing to the Lord. So today we celebrate Mr. Jack's life. We remember. We're inspired. We're encouraged. And at times those tears are tears of laughter, and at times they're tears of joy. Yet we know that we celebrate not only his earthly life, but his eternal life. So then we've been asked the question as we 
conclude our few moments together here, and that is this. How do we know that Jack Loudermilk, when he took his last breath in this life, is now in eternal life? Was it his goodness? No. Was it because he was a Baptist church member? Well, no. Was it because he was faithful for 65 years to his wife and that he loved his children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren? No. Is it because of his kindness? No. It's because Jesus was Lord of his life. That's how we have the confidence. The truth is, it's really nothing that Mr. Jack has done. It's all that Jesus has done. As we just celebrated Easter, the resurrection of Jesus, the fact that Jesus died on the cross for the sins of the world, the Bible says. He that knew no sin became sin. It was, it was laid in a tomb that was borrowed because he only needed it three days. Kind of a rental plan there, wasn't it? A layaway plan. And then he rose again, the scripture says, and that that resurrection of Jesus, Romans 6 says, the power of that resurrection not only was for Jesus, but it's for us, that whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. See, Mr. Jack knew that the, the way was not a religion the way was not a goodness. The way was not just helping other people. The way was not a knowledge. The way was a person. His name is Jesus. For Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. And the reason Jesus said that is because he just told his disciples a few verses earlier in John 14. He said, I'm going to a place, and if I go there, I'm preparing a place for you so that where I am, you may also be. And Thomas, who perhaps we're often like, Thomas was the one who went, okay, wait, wait, wait. What, 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 where are you going? How are we going to come to where you are if we don't know where you're going? We don't know the way. And Jesus said, no, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I know there could be no greater honor that we could give Mr. Jack than that today, if anyone in this room, if any family member, if any friend does not have the confidence of Jesus being your Lord and Savior, that you would in your heart pray a simple prayer of surrender to say, Jesus, you died for me. You were laid in the tomb and you rose again. And the best I know how, I give my life to you. I don't want to do it my way. I don't want my family to wonder or to have an empty hope. I want them to have a confident hope based on the Word of God and based on who you are, Jesus, in my life. The Bible says whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. You can pray a simple prayer in your heart and know the same Jesus that Mr. Jack knew. Have the same blessing that your family can know that when you take that last breath, that you're in eternity with Jesus because of what Christ did on the cross and because of his resurrection. Mr. Lord, I do pray that the Lord would continue to guard your heart and mind in Christ. That he would give you his peace that passes understanding. Eddie, that you and Debbie and the family, that you would remember and there would be smiles and moments that you laugh and maybe something that, that you experienced with Mr. Jack that maybe others were there but didn't catch what he said or didn't catch that moment and, and that treasure of friends that we have of those memories and that those memories would not only be about the past but those memories would point us to Jesus so that we could have a confident future and a certain eternity because of our faith in Christ like Mr. Jack had. My life is blessed. To be your pastor, Mr. Lewis. To be Mr. Jack's pastor. Debbie, you, Steve, Eddie, to know you and Rita, and the grandkids and family and friends that share this time of celebration. And it is that. He's won the ultimate victory. And again, even as his body was failing, his spirit was getting stronger. Then what, what seemed to be the end was really the beginning. The beginning of life that Jesus had. And so, Father, we come to you. We thank you for your word and how it speaks to us. And I thank you for Mr. Jack. I thank you that in some ways he had a personality and a smile and a laugh that was bigger than life itself. And, Lord, we thank you that as we remember him, our lives are better because of him. And I pray that in remembering him, Lord, we would remember you. And, again, I pray if there's one person, one family member, one friend who does not know Jesus as Lord and Savior, that this would be their moment of salvation. This would be their moment of, of life change. This would be their moment of eternity grabbing by placing their faith in you, Lord. I pray for Mr. Lewis and Debbie, Eddie and the family, Lord, that you bless them, the friends, Lord, that you would indeed guard our hearts and minds in Christ. That the smile of Mr. Jack, that the faith that he had, that the way that he loved us, Lord, would inspire us to live our life in that same way. We thank you, Lord, 
that even on this day, a few days after Easter, celebrating the resurrection, that that reminds us that we celebrate today the ultimate victory of Mr. Jack Malcolm. Lord, we love you. We thank you. Bless Miss Dolores. Let us reach out to her. Remember her and the family and stand in the gap with her. May we be your hands and feet. May we be your heart toward her. We pray these things in Jesus' name.